Hi, my name is Dr. Monica. So I thought we would go through the different types of masks available today and talking about how to get the best use out of each of those. So we'll start off with cloth masks, then we'll move to surgical masks, um, uh, as well as N95 masks, and then we'll touch briefly on valved masks. So we'll start off with cloth masks first. So always we're starting off with hand hygiene and you're looking for a hand sanitizer that has at least 60% alcohol content. Um, so this is one of the cloth masks that I've purchased. Now with cloth masks, um, the sort of scenarios that I would wear this in is something that I consider to be low risk. For example, exercise around the neighborhood um, or in places where you think that you'll be able to maintain social distancing for the majority of the time. Um, so they're a good sustainable option um, and there are different guidelines around um, the different materials that should be used into the masks and it should be three layers with one of them being water resistant on the outside, a second layer in the middle which is also water resistant and um, a water absorbing cotton on the inside. So when you're shopping around for your cloth mask, just look for that. And they come in different designs. There's ones with ear loops or I prefer the ones which are tied back which I think provide a better fit. So now I'm just going to wear the cloth masks. So I find having a, my hair in a ponytail really helps with this for the ladies. So I'm tying it at the top and then just around here. You can either choose to tie it around your neck or above your ponytail. You're just looking for as good a seal as you can. So there. It can sometimes be a bit difficult and it does take some getting used to wearing these cloth masks, um, especially with the middle layer. But um, just see how you go at home, put it on for a few minutes at a time um, and you will find that you will get used to it. Um, so this is an option for cloth coverings. There are other cloth coverings that are available such as um, a light scarf or ski masks um, and they would be I guess your lowest risk situations where you would want a cloth mask. So next we're going to move on to our surgical masks and these are probably the ones that you've seen most of. So these are the disposable surgical masks and so you've got your water resistant coloured side on the outside and you've got your um, more, more water absorbing layer on the inside which is usually white. You've got some wire at the top which you want to uh, shape around your nose and most of the times these ones have ear loops but they do come with tie backs as well. So a lot of the time with these surgical masks the issue may be that you get a bit of a leak when you wear um, the face mask so it's often from the side or from the top as well. You can try to shape the wire around your nose, but it's not always effective. And I saw, I've seen a tutorial online of different ways to, um, I guess, combat the seal. So I just wanted to show you that today. So in terms of what you want to do, so you do want to fold it lengthways. So the inside is now facing on the outside. Then you're going to tie a couple of knots. And you want these knots to be as close to the, um, the mask side as you can. So there you go. So you've got knots on both sides as close as you can to the cloth part. Now what I usually do, um, I have a little bit of sticky tape. And so I'll stick down the two open edges of the mask. And so now it's stuck down like this. What you can do next is flip it inside out so it's like a little boat. And this will help you achieve a better seal. And it's especially good for people who might have um, a smaller face where you're often finding the surgical mask doesn't give you an adequate seal. So then when you put it on, you can see here that it's a better fit. And when I breathe in and out, you can see that the air is traveling through the mask than rather around the mask. Okay, so that's an option as well. And when you're taking off, just be careful to take around the ear loops. And then you want to dispose in the bin just straight in. I'll just put it to the side for now. So that's your surgical mask. And then every time you're taking off the mask, you want to do your hand hygiene. So now we're moving on to N95 masks. And as you can see, I put my hair up and usually if I'm wearing an N95, then I'm also going to be wearing a scrub cap on top. 
for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to be talking about the masks. So when we're talking about N95 masks, um, we're looking at usually duck bill designs, but there are a couple of other designs available. And so the thinking behind N95 masks is that they're going to filtrate out approximately 95% of the particles that are in the air to protect us against getting coronavirus infection. Now we ask that you don't go out and purchase these if you're part of the general public because you really don't need this level of protection when you're out in the community. However, for those of us who are required to wear N95s in the workplace or in the healthcare setting, I'm just going to show you how to put it on. So they usually have a wire on the top that fits around your nose and a couple of elastics as well. So we'll go ahead and put this one on. Okay, and so usually one above and one below and shaping the wire around your nose. Now in terms of making sure that it's on and that there's an adequate seal, there's two things that you can do. The first is that you can do the breathing test. So when you're breathing, you're noticing that the air is moving through the mask and not around it and that you can see the mask moving back and forth. Now the second test is the touch test. So touching around the mask as you're breathing and trying to feel for any leaks. If you're happy, then you're ready to go. Now in terms of taking off, so again we're going to do hand hygiene and being really careful not to touch the front part of the mask at any stage because that's the area that is most at risk. It's the area where viral particles might be. So when we're taking it off, approaching from the back, just doing it slowly and then putting it down into your clinical waste bin and just doing your hand hygiene between each step as usual. Now we'll talk briefly about valved masks. Now these are one of the designs of the valve masks. These are not recommended for use in the general public or the workplace. The reason being is that they have a valve at the front. There are a couple of other designs including cloth masks that have a valve on the side. Now the reason that they're there is for the comfort of the wearer. However, it does lead to a false sense of security. The valve doesn't allow you to breathe in the viral particles in the air. However, because it is one way, it does allow you to breathe out viral particles if you're unwell. So we don't recommend them. However, if you're faced in a situation where you have absolutely no other option, none of the true N95s, then there is an option that you can use a disposable surgical mask over the top. So I'll show that to you briefly. So I would never go out into the public with just wearing a valve mask like this. If you need to, then you can wear a surgical mask over the top. And that way you're not going to breathe out the viral particles. Then when it takes time to take the mask off, we're doing hand hygiene. We're just going to lower the surgical mask down slowly into the clinical waves and again taking care not to touch the front part of the mask. And doing your hand hygiene at the end again. So thank you for joining me. I hope this gives you a little bit more confidence uh, with the array of masks that are available on the market or in the workplace at the moment. Take care and thanks again for joining me.